Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to discuss NASA's Solar Probe Plus, which was renamed as the Parker Satellite in honor of astrophysicist Eugene Parker for his work on the solar winds. In 1958, Parker advanced today's accepted model for the generation of the solar winds, the thermal expansion of coronal gas. In my view, the solar winds are not produced by this mechanism, and I will discuss this in a future video. The existence of solar winds was first inferred by Berman when he commented on the motion of comet tails. The Parker satellite will be launched from Cape Canaveral between July 31st and August 19, 2018 using a Delta IV rocket with heavy upper stage. Once reaching its orbit three months after launch, the satellite will begin repeated elliptical orbits of 88 days around the Sun with an initial perihelion of approximately 0.16 astronomical units or 35 solar radii. Over a 6.9 year period, the satellite is anticipated to have 24 solar encounters and seven Venus flybys ending in 2025. The closest the Parker satellite will approach the sun is about 9.5 solar radii or around 3.8 million miles above the solar surface and will be traveling at approximately 450,000 miles per hour. That is seven times closer to the sun than any spacecraft has ever traveled. The radiative intensity of the sun there is approximately 500 times greater than that on Earth. The satellite shield will reach a scorching 1400 degrees Celsius, while the instrument section should remain pretty much at room temperature. To avoid burning to a crisp, the Parker satellite has a 4.5 inch carbon composite shield facing the sun, protecting the probe from intense heat. It also has a solar panel array, which can be retracted at perihelion. Of course, the shield is not useful if it's not facing the sun. To maintain the orientation of the spacecraft, the satellite uses three star trackers and an inertial measurement unit to collect data. This data is then fed to a hydrazine propulsion system consisting of 12 0.9 newton thrusters and two 4.4 newton thrusters working together with the four reaction wheel system to adjust the change in velocity, delta V, and attitude. The thrusters have a total hydrazine tank of 554 kilograms of material and can adjust the delta V by 190 meters per second over the life of the spacecraft. The proper orientation of the spacecraft is also important to beam data back to the Earth. But what data is being collected? The first experiment is the fields experiment, which will measure, amongst other things, the intensity of magnetic and electric fields, the absolute plasma density, and electron temperatures. Second, the integrated science investigation will monitor energetic electrons, protons, and heavy ions. Third, the wide field imager will take images of the solar corona. Fourth, the solar wind electron alphas and proton or sweep investigation will count the most abundant particles in the solar wind, namely electrons, helium ions, and protons. These experiments all work towards the three goals of the satellite, to determine the structure and dynamics of the magnetic fields and the sources associated with fast and slow solar winds, to trace the flow of energy that heats the corona and accelerates the solar wind, and to determine what mechanisms accelerate and transport energetic particles. Of course, I do not agree that the corona is being heated. The presence of highly ionized species like iron 25 in the corona is an electron affinity problem, not a temperature problem, as we will discuss in future videos. That is one of the reasons why the Parker mechanism cannot be correct. Overall, however, the Parker mission does seem extraordinary. There is lots of anticipation relative to the data it will gather. However, there is a note of caution here. If the corona of the sun possesses a higher density than currently calculated, it may well be that the spacecraft will experience higher forces than expected when designing the thrusters. If the spacecraft is flipped, then the sensors will be fried. If the forces are not strong enough to flip the craft, but still greater than calculated, the hydrazine stores of the spacecraft will be used up more quickly, causing the mission to end before the projected year. As such, let's keep an eye on the Parker satellite in the coming years.
If you care about the Sun, you cannot ignore this mission. If you want to learn more about the Parker satellites, there are two documents in the NASA website linked in the description. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you want more videos, subscribe to promote this channel and stick with me as we look more closely at the Sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.